Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. You know, Kitty, mm-hmm. uh, when you stop to think about it, Chester has a mighty easy life. Mighty easy. <laughs> I never thought much about it, Doc. Ah, uh, well, that... Bo- Pass the sugar with me. Mm. Thank you, Kitty. Now, you take today, for instance. There they are, probably arriving in Abilene just about now. Nothing to do but pick up a prisoner and then catch the train back to Dodge. Well, according to Matt, that train ride to Abilene can be pretty unpleasant. Dust, heat, squalling babies. No, that isn't the way Chester sees it. He he spent the last three days talking about how he was going to sit back and enjoy himself. I thought that boy would never stop talking about that trip. Well, Doc, I think you're jealous. Oh, no, no, Chester doesn't even have to pay for it. That's the thing. Yes, sir. That kind of... If I wanted to go to St. Louis or someplace like that, I'd have to pay, you see. Oh, but you don't work for a U.S. Marshal, Doc. No, I don't. I thank heavens for it, too. <laughs> I've um, heard Chester say that you have it pretty easy yourself sometimes, Doc. Well, that would be easy. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Be, why, my life is nothing but a constant round of pills, colic, gunshot wounds, and dyspepsia. Sure. Nothing but complaints, unpaid bills, and work. Yeah. Mm, I'm fed up with it, too. Stuck in that office of mine day in, day out. And... Well, what are you going to do about it? Go fishing. I figure the only thing that'll cheer me up is catfish stew. Doc, <laughs> uh, you're as big a fraud as any of them. Come on, now, have some more coffee. Yeah, the railroad's getting better every month, Chester. They're going to civilize this prairie yet. No, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, let's go. That sure don't change much, does it? Looks about like it did the last time I was here. Well, we're getting most of the cattle at Dodge now. The boom's leveled off here. Still a pretty rough town, though. Mr. Dillon, you think you'll put up a fight? I don't know, Chester. He's pretty mean from all reports. He may. We'll try to avoid it, though. Of course, we're only guessing anyway. He might not even be here. And he always heads for Abilene when he gets in trouble. It's his hometown. He'll be here. Yeah. One good thing is Bill Hickok's town, too. At least we'll have the local sheriff on our side for once. Well, I suppose that's some help. Some help? <laughs> I'd rather have Wild Bill along than anybody I know. I suppose. What's the matter with you, Chester? You're acting like a man at his own funeral. Mr. Dillon, I've had an uneasy feeling ever since we left Dodge. Huh? A hunch, you might say. That's ah, nonsense. We're going to pick up a killer and take him back for trial. And that's all. Maybe. And maybe not. You know, Chester, any man who lives by a gun knows down inside that he's going to die by one someday, but... If he's got any sense, he keeps from thinking about it. Of course, he can't help getting a hunch now and then. I've had plenty of them myself. <laughs> Mostly wrong. Oh, come on, Chester. Let's walk down to the last chance, and I'll buy you a drink. As a matter of fact, I'll buy both of us a drink. <laughs> Yes, sir. Make mine the same. 
A bottle of wine and a couple of glasses. Well, there's quite a crowd in here for this time, day, ain't there? Yeah. <laughs> Just looking around for Wild Bill, but I don't see him anywhere. Reckon the Daggett kid's in here? Well, he spent most of his time hanging around the saloons while he was in Dodge. Here you are. Oh, uh, could I have a sugar bowl, please? Sugar? Drink up. Thanks. Uh, by the way, uh, you happen to know a kid around town? Name of, name of what? Never mind. Uh, he's here, Chester. Hmm? Down there at the end of the bar. Yeah. Yeah, it's him, all right. <laughs> well, Mr. Well, he's what we're here for. Are we going to wait for Mr. Hickok? No. You come up on his left side, Chester, and watch his gun hand. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was the funniest sight you ever seen. The bullet knocked that strawny hound dog end over end. The first shot I fired, he caught him right in the back of his head. <laughs> You're Jack Daggett, aren't you? That's right, mister. What about it? My name's Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal from Dodge. You're under arrest, Daggett. <laughs> well, you're, uh, kind of out of your territory, ain't you? A marshal's territory is anywhere. I'll, uh, take that gun of yours. You will, huh? All right. Drop it. Drop the gun. Let go of my Drop the gun, I said. I'll drop nothing. You heard the marshal. No. Yeah. That was easy, Mr. Dillon. A lot easier than I thought it'd be. All right, Chester, put the cuffs on him. Yes, sir. Seems to me your partner acted a little high-handed there, Marshal. It does, huh? He had no call to slug that boy in the head that way. Would you rather I'd have put a bullet in his belly? Chester saved his life, that's all. He was drawing on me. Well, now, if you'd come around and seen me before you start anything, you wouldn't have had this trouble. My name's Roar. I'm the town constable here. I see. Young Jack here told me all about that shooting out in Dodge. Said they ganged up on him in a poker game, tried to cheat him, and forced him to shoot his way out. Well, that's a good story. It's too bad it didn't happen that way. All right, Chester, let's get him on his feet and go find the sheriff. I reckon you won't be finding him. Oh, why not? Hickok's up in Topeka. Won't be back for a week or ten days. And in the meantime, I'm the law in Abilene. Well, then I've got a favor to ask from you. I'd like to use one of your jail cells until nine o'clock. That's when the next train leaves for Dodge. Sorry, Marshal. I got no authority to do anything What like difference that. does that make if Wild Bill were yeah, here? Yeah, but Wild Bill ain't here. A lot of us folks here like to run our own town. We don't like outsiders coming in and taking over. It's four hours till that train leaves, Marshal. I think you're going to find four hours is a long time. Meaning what? This young fellow you arrest has got a couple older brothers, the Daggett boys. You probably never heard of them, but you're going to. They're not going to like this. I don't much care what they like. Maybe they'll teach you to care when they hear about this, and they will hear. Like I said, four hours is a long time. Look, I want you to get something straight. I came here to arrest a killer and take him back to Dodge to stand trial. I got him under arrest now, and I'm going to take him back. Maybe. All right, Chester, let's get him out of here. You get a hold of his other arm. Lift him up. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Maybe this was too easy. Uh, yes, sir, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I'd like to get a room, please. 
Well, I have a very nice one right at the head of the stairs. You care to take a look no, at that it? That won't be necessary. We only need it for about four hours until the train leaves for Dodge. Four hours, I yeah. see. There. You, you sign the register here. Thank you. My, your, uh, your friend seems to have suffered quite an injury. Yes, sir. He bumped his head. Really? Well, it's certainly a bad cut. Just to... Well, that's one of the Daggett boys, young Jack Daggett. That's right. I've got him under arrest for murder. Where's the room? You arrested Jack Daggett right here in Abilene? Yeah. And you're planning to keep him here in my hotel for the next four hours? I can't stand out there on the street with him. Marshal, do you know what's going to happen when the Daggett boys hear about this? No, but I understand they may not like it much. I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot stay here. I will not let my hotel be made the scene of a bloody massacre. Just a minute, mister. You've rented me a room. I've signed the register, and I've got the key. Well, yes, I'm I gonna know. I'm going to use that room until 9 o'clock, whether you like it or not. Well, it's, uh, it's the second door at the top of the stairs. Thank you. Come on, Daggett, move. Oh, there's just one thing, sir. Yes? It's not a question of your honesty, you understand, but in view of the circumstances, I wonder if you'd mind paying in advance. What time is it, Chester? It's, uh... 623, Mr. Jones. Yeah. I thought it was later. Yes, sir, I know. It goes pretty slow when you're waiting for something like this. I wish it was 9 o'clock. I wish we was leaving on that train right now. You're not leaving on no train. Not alive. Daggett, you've got a one-track mind. So have my brothers, Dylan. What they think about all the time is hands off the daggets. That goes for you or anybody else. I reckon we ought to stuff a pillar in his mouth, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, might not be a bad idea. Now, you won't think it's funny when they come around. Yeah, but maybe they won't. Maybe they've decided. You cover the door from the other side, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah, who is it? It's me, sir, the clerk. What do you want? It's the Daggett boys. They're across the street at the last chance right now. You're hoping I'll go over there instead of waiting for them to come here? Huh? Well, I, I... All right. I'd rather jump them than have it the other way around. Yes, sir, I guess we'll go over and talk to him. Well, but what about him? Well, he's cuffed hand and foot to a pretty solid iron bed. I don't think he's going anywhere. You ready, Chester? Ready whenever you are, Mr. Dillon. All right. Let's go. enough to stay out of it this far, stay out of it now. My name is Dillon, United States Marshal from Dodge City. I got your brother Jack under arrest for murder. You probably heard about it. Yeah. Rumors got around. Well, I'm taking him out of here on the nine o'clock train. He's going back to Dodge to stand trial, and my guess is he'll hang. Now, the point is this. What are you going to do about it? Why didn't you wait? We looked you up. You didn't answer the question, Daggett. It's 
still two hours and a half till nine o'clock. Reckon we got plenty of time, man. We'll wait. Why wait? What's the matter with right now? We'd rather wait. Huh. Maybe you're trying to pick up some helpers among this bunch of hangers-on, huh? Now, just look at them. Each one trying to sneak behind the man next to him. If you're counting on any help there, forget it. You're pushing your luck, Dylan. I don't think so. You boys are full of talk, that's all. You never even intended to start anything. You're a dirty liar. Hold it. Don't move, either one of you. All right, now, I'll take that gun. Thank you. Yours, too. Sure. It's your play, Dylan. The way it stands now. Thanks. Here, Chester. Kick those back under the tables. Sure. All right, now leave them lay. No, nobody touch them. Here, Chester, hold on to my gun. All right, sir. And just keep them off my back. Yes, sir. All right, you. You come here. Now, you called me a liar, didn't you? Yeah. I thought you daggers were tough. All right, you. You're next. I'll wait, Marshal. I'll get to you later. Uh, you're a no-good coward, Daggett. All right, Chester, I'll take my gun back now. Thanks. Well, boys, the show's over. Unless, of course, one of you would like to take up where the daggers left off. Any one of you still figuring on helping them try to take my prisoner away from me? No, I didn't think so. Because you're all fine, upright citizens now. A pride and joy to Constable Rourke here. That's enough, Dylan. I thought I told you the show was over. All right, now beat it. Go on, get out, all of you. Move! Marshal, I'd say you overreach yourself there. Step past the limits of your authority. How I enforce the law is my own business. I do things my way. It's a way it'll get you killed someday. Maybe. I have to live in this town, Dylan. You don't know those Daggett brothers. You cross them, you're through. I've seen it happen. Come on, Chester. Let's go. All right, Mr. Dillon. Is it, Chester? Uh, quarterly. Uh, time's dragging. Yes, sir. Still an hour and 15 minutes till that train leaves. What difference does it make? You're not going to be on it. Neither one of you are. Jack, the way I'm figuring, we'll all three be on it. Wait and see. You'll never get to that train. My brothers will take care of you. Well, they don't seem to be in any hurry about it. You wait. I sure do wish I hadn't had such an uneasy hunch about this trip. Forget it, Chester. They'll stop you. You just wait. Get on it. Oh, Chester, you're wearing yourself out. Why don't you sit down and relax? I just can't set my mind to it, Mr. Dillon. No daggett will ever leave this town wearing handcuffs as long as the other two are alive. Well, that's up to them. Sure. 
And they'll take care of it, too. I swear, Mr. Dillon, I almost wish they would try something and get it over with. Well, waiting's always the worst part, Chester. You find out what the worst part is. I could gag him, Mr. Dillon. No, let him talk. He's only got a few more weeks to do it in. They'll never hang me. I'll never even stand trial. You wait and see. Chester? Uh, Half past eight. All right. Let's get started. It's a little early, ain't it? Won't take that long to walk from here to the station. Well, it might if we have trouble. Chester, I guess it might. Oh, you'll have trouble. Don't you worry about Why that. don't you get on a new subject, Jack? How are we going to take him? Drag him? If he wants it that way, otherwise he'll walk handcuffed to my left wrist. You keep him covered, Chester. I'll unlock these cuffs and get him loose from the bed. Dylan, if you're smart, you'll leave me here and run while you still got the chance. And I've never been smart enough to run yet. Stick out your right wrist. All right, on your feet. You can put your gun away, Chester. Starting now, he's only going where I go. Come on, Jack. We got a train to catch. Oh, thank heaven, gentlemen, you're leaving. Yeah, we're leaving. I want to thank you for your hospitality. I'll be glad to recommend your hotel to anybody who plans to stop over in Abilene. Well, I, I hardly know what to say, Marshal. You, you simply don't understand. You you don't know these Daggett brothers. Uh, no, no offense personally, Jack. I have to live in this town, and I... Come on, Jack. You boys must run quite a bluff. You got everybody in town jumping sideways. You'd be smart if you did, Dylan. Good luck, gentlemen. The best of luck to, well, to all of you. <laughs> all of us. Well, let's hedge in his bet. Look, Mr. Dillon, ain't a soul on the street. Quiet as a graveyard. Now, they're going to make a play, Chester. Somewhere between here and the depot, we can count on it. Yes, sir, I kindly figured they would. Especially after getting beat up over there at the saloon. Now, they would have anyway. And jumping them like that did one good thing. It scared the pack off. At least we only have to worry about the Daggets, not a mob. You think it's a mob? You shut up. Gun. From now on, you keep your mouth shut. If you don't, so help me, I'll slug you and drag you to the train. All right, let's go. Not a soul. That's right. I never thought I'd see the main street of Abilene deserted at this time of night. It's not the deserted, Chester. They're inside behind the shutters. At least they're staying out of it. I wonder if Coyotes is as lonesome as it sounds. I couldn't be, Chester. Watch that left side ahead of us. It's pretty dark along there. Yes, sir, I am. You know, they might maybe jump us from behind. I don't think so. Too many people watching. they got to keep up their reputation. I sure hope you're right. Chester, they're at the corner of the bank. Somebody moved. Yeah, across the street, too, in the shadow of the bank. Take the one on the shadow, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, that's one. The other one's still there in the shadows. Get him if you can, Chester. You ain't going to get him. No! What happened, Mr. Dillon? He caught a bullet that was meant for me. His own brother shot him. Just keep firing, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, hold it, Chester. Well, I guess we got the other one. Here. Now, get these handcuffs open. Yes, sir. our prisoner, Jack Daggett, wanted for murder, killed by his brother. Now, let's take a look at the others. Three men, 
bed. Look back down the street there, Mr. Dean. All starting to crawl out of their holes. Sure. They're all on our side now. Oh, come on, Chester. The train's pulling in. Let's get on it and get out of here. Yes, sir. And let Rourke clean up this mess. He ought to be good for something. More lonesome than the coyotes, Chester. There's a man that creeps. Yes, sir, it sure does. Well, you were wrong on that hunch of yours, Chester. It wasn't us. Not this time. by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Joseph Kearns, James Nutter, Barney Phillips, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Hawkins is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news follows, then Mitch Miller with tonight's guest stars on the CBS Radio Network.